After your stint at Sony, you wind up at a little studio named Dice. Uh, what drew you to their studio, and what was your role when you got there? Uh, I guess I, I you know, I, um, I had a friend who was there uh, who thought I would fit in. They were working on Bad Company, which was kind of this cool cross of, uh, of like humor and, uh, and openness that, um, that I thought would be fun to work on. Uh, so, so I went over there um, ostensibly to be lead designer on Bad Company 2 because they were supposed to be finishing Bad Company 1. Um, uh, however, as things work out, um, they had, hadn't quite finished with Bad Company 1, so I stayed. Uh, I came in kind of as a senior designer to help finish uh, BC1 as my first, first task there. So at some point, you go from working on Bad Company 1 to inheriting the title of lead gameplay designer. Game designer, yeah. Game designer on Bad Company 2. Uh, which is known for its dynamic, destructible environments, yeah, yeah. large maps, uh, vehicles, and the award-winning rock, paper, scissor formula. Yeah. Uh, what sort of direct influence did you have on that series? Um, well, <clears throat> when I, I also uh, I went up writing the whole game, uh, all the all the single player, and all I think all the most of the multiplayer video also. Um, so, just the the whole single player campaign uh, w was something I was like directly responsible for, for uh, writing uh, and the building kind of the narrative uh, structure. Um, but then overall, I think the vision for the game was, um, was something that I was like also tasked with, was like, how are we gonna, how are we gonna get everybody to be, um, be excited about, about this? You know, the first game did okay, but really the, the, the pressure was on us to make something that could, uh, you know, honestly, like to, com to compete in some sense with, with um, top tier shooter of the day, which was Call of Duty 4. Is there a, a gameplay mechanic in there that's entirely yours? Um, well, I think there's there's like, I mean, there's all the the mission structure stuff that we worked out. There's there are some mechanics in there that I know that um, Alan. I mean, Alan was responsible. Alan Kurtz was responsible for uh, for really for all the the gameplay uh, gameplay mechanics. Um, I think that my stuff tended to be more the meta stuff, like how the unlock system was going to work, which mm -hmm. is also a guy named Vale, um, and how how we were going to make all the level, all that stuff work the way that it did. So I wouldn't take credit for any of that stuff. I was just there, kind of helping those guys make um, make the, make the right decisions, or at least ha or have them challenge my decisions and say the you know and, and make better ones. You touched upon Modern Warfare being out at the time. Yeah. So November tenth, <clears> two thousand nine. Modern Warfare 2 releases. It's one of the biggest video game launches in history. Yeah. Again, you're working on a team that is tasked to work opposite of that and potentially bring it down as a direct competitor. Yeah, I guess I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> that it happened before. Uh, this time, however, the opposite happens. Yeah. Where Bad Company 2 launches March of 2010 and makes a huge mark on the first person genre. And in many ways, Bad Company 2 puts the Battlefield series on the map. Yeah. And you guys essentially went from a known franchise to a really well-known franchise to the number two shooter. Yeah. What was the studio's, studio's internal reaction to the success of the game? It's funny because um, uh, I remember when we started, we knew, like I, I know personally I love being the underdog. It's like something I'm really, I don't know, it's just it's something I like. Um, and we were the underdog in, the stu like in some sense in the studio too, like um, because no one... No one was really sure about the franchise, I think, to some extent. Um, and, uh, and so when it came out the way that it did, I think we knew we had something special internally when we played like uh, Port Valdez. I think it was a first, first like, multiplayer map, and we were like, holy fuck, this is good. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, we played, uh, um, what's the other one, Riga Harbor. And I think that was the best multiplayer I'd ever played in my life. And those are the two maps that you guys originally released. Yeah. Was like a closed beta and an yeah. like open beta. Yeah. You could have released that. I think people would just. Play yeah, I think I think they were just extraordinarily good, um, and um, and so like then when the game came out, we, I think we all knew like because people were so excited about the game when we would show it, and like internally a lot of people were like, "Holy oh, shit, this game is good," and then when it came out, we were like, "Something something's gonna happen," and then it, it there was, I think like they didn't know what to do um, for a <laughs> while. We were like, we knew it was good. We didn't realize it was going to sell that way um so that was great so i was going to ask you know did you guys know you're building it you know a quote-unquote triple a hit when you were doing it we knew we were we knew we were spending money um <laughs> uh, 
we didn't but, but we didn't you, know you knew you had a you knew you had something good there yeah we didn't know we were going to sell like whatever 14 right. million units right. um no what's your what's your opinion on the youtube gaming scene um the youtube gaming scene starts out right around the same time as bad company 2 comes out yeah call of duty was kind of first and then you guys kind of step in do you think that has a direct impact on the success of a game because especially a bad company or any battlefield game because now these battlefield moments can be yeah. shared with people yeah i mean it seems like it's it's become a thing now um and uh you know at the time i didn't really see, even see it happening i just have sort of noticed it happening more and more now and at, now it's at the point where you know uh, a, a stream of a game can make make or break uh, a game in, in some cases so yeah, it's been interesting to watch that happen kind of under our noses and realize that it's now a thing that you have to account for. 